Considering how much she achieved in her six-decade-long career, it is easy to think Elizabeth Taylor's life was a jolly ride with diamonds and shiny Hollywood glamour. And to an extent, this is true. But then she's also been known to have had an unhappy childhood and a long list of health problems. She lost people she held dear to her and went through abuse in not just one, but two of her marriages. Sadly, these only got worse at the end of her life, health problems that led to addictions as well as strange behaviors that could only be the result of unresolved mental health issues and a deeply lonely life. This is the rise and fall of Elizabeth Taylor, an isolated childhood. When Liz appeared in the 1947 movie Life with Father, she posed for a rather inappropriate publicity photo that remains today. Just 15 at the time, the picture showed Taylor in a low-cut dress, reclining on a couch with a suggestive look on her face. The picture would be one of many. At this point in her life, she all but had no connection with her parents. Her mother had begun grooming her for her acting career when she was nine, and she had begun to live full-time on the MGM studio lot since she was 12. Even her education took place on the studio lot. Young Elizabeth Taylor had no friends of her age, and she spent even more time hanging out with horses and dogs than with actual people. Not long after she turned 18, Liz Taylor got married to hotel heir Conrad Hilton. While there are speculations that the marriage was a publicity stunt for her next movie, Father of the Bride, it is likely the young actress was simply trying to escape a heavily controlled life. Sadly, her marriage to Conrad Hilton ended just after eight months. But what Liz didn't know was how her acting would inspire one of the biggest fashion movements of the century, Egyptomania. In 1922, British archaeologist Howard Carter discovered the 3,000-year-old tomb of the Egyptian king Tutankhamun and kicked off the Egyptology craze of the 20th century. There were art exhibitions and rumors of a killing curse that plagued those who got too close. A few decades later, Elizabeth Taylor starred in the 1963 movie Cleopatra. Liz Taylor's career was at its peak in the 50s and 60s, a household name known for her roles in classics like Giant and Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. But Cleopatra was different. The film was such a blockbuster hit that it began a cultural revolution and started what is now known as the Egyptian fashion craze, or Egyptomania. Women everywhere began to imitate Elizabeth Taylor's signature wig and eye makeup, especially the winged eyeliner that is popular to this day. There were crash diets and plastic surgeries. Egyptian-inspired jewelry was the moment, and designers like Halston and Yves Saint Laurent rolled out Egyptomania collections. However, while Taylor's career grew at an astonishing rate, her personal life suffered greatly. One fateful day, while married to U.S. Senator John Warner, Liz Taylor called her son Christopher Wilding into her bedroom and, holding a syringe, asked him to help inject her with an opioid known as Demerol. He refused and, to his horror, watched as his mother shot up. Not long after, the family held a bedside intervention for the actress and sent her off to rehab. You must be wondering how she ended up an addict. But before we answer that question, make sure to like and subscribe to this channel if you don't want to miss videos just like this one. The Fall of Elizabeth Taylor Now, back to the video. One truth everyone agrees on about Liz Taylor is that she was a very beautiful woman and a powerful actress. She appeared on and off the screen for 60 years, and she won many career awards including two Oscars, four Golden Globes, and one BAFTA. But she was a little unlucky in the love department. Her first husband, Conrad Hilton Jr., was very abusive. He was an alcoholic and even went as far as beating her on multiple occasions. The marriage lasted less than a year before she married her next husband, Michael Wilding, in 1952. The two of them had a 20-year age difference, and things went pretty well until Michael Wilding got tired of the public attention. Afterwards, she fell in love with big-time producer Mike Todd. Then he, unfortunately, passed away in 1958. Next, Elizabeth did something shocking when she got married to her late husband's best friend, Eddie Fisher. This marriage in particular was a huge scandal, and the public scrutiny Liz got from it remained throughout her life. This was because, at the time, Fisher was very much married to another young actress, Debbie Reynolds, who was also Liz Taylor's friend. To make things worse, Fisher and Liz Taylor's marriage didn't go very well. It is reported that Eddie Fisher was emotionally abusive towards Elizabeth as he was a very possessive and jealous man. While Liz Taylor dealt with abusive or dead husbands as well as the harsh judgment of the press and the public, 
her health steadily declined. The actress was born with scoliosis. She also had multiple accidents while filming such as the time she fell off a horse while filming National Velvet. Liz Taylor was also an insomniac. In December of 1983, while in the hospital for a bowel obstruction, Liz Taylor's family held an intervention in her hospital room. Not long after that intervention, she became the first celebrity guest at the Betty Ford Center for Drug and Alcohol Rehabilitation in California. The same rehab center would later welcome Mary Tyler Moore, Johnny Cash, and even Liz's friend Liza Minnelli. A biography report states that three of Elizabeth's doctors wrote a combined 1,000 prescriptions for 28 drugs between 1983 and 1988. These drugs included tranquilizers, sleeping pills, and painkillers. It was bad enough that a doctor going through her medical file assumed she was dead because of how lethal the doses were. Elizabeth spent seven weeks in rehab after her family begged her to. However, she had to return not long after the death of her ex-husband Richard Burton. It was on this second trip to rehab that Liz met Larry Fortensky, a 37-year-old construction worker and recovering alcoholic. Elizabeth's use of painkillers was arguably necessary as the actress was constantly in pain. She had over 19 major surgeries throughout her life, including a partial hysterectomy and brain surgery. Sadly, Elizabeth Taylor died in 2011, still fighting her addictions at the age of 79 due to congestive heart failure. Her Legacy Despite her addiction, Liz Taylor was known by all to be a kind and loving soul until the end of her life. You could say she had a reputation for taking in strays, both animal and human. One memorable example of this was her support for Rock Hudson. After the closeted gay actor got sick with AIDS and was rejected by everyone he knew in Hollywood, Elizabeth openly spoke in support of him until the time he died. Another interesting Liz Taylor story is that the actress once sold exclusive photos of her eighth and last wedding with Larry Fortensky to the national and international press. The press was desperate enough to send 10 helicopters to circle the venue, and so they were willing to pay millions of dollars for the pictures. Liz Taylor donated every cent to AIDS charities, a cause she was very passionate about if you didn't count the diamonds and perfumes. Another legacy we will always remember about Elizabeth Taylor is that she was quite the businesswoman. When she did Cleopatra, Taylor made sure she was paid $1 million. At the time, this was the most any actor had ever been paid in the history of Hollywood. Her perfume business was also a huge hit. Most big celebrities used their popularity to make money outside of acting, but she was the first to do it successfully. The first was in 1987, Elizabeth released her first perfume passion with a 30-day promotional tour in nine cities across the USA. Her White Diamonds perfume, which she released in 1991, was the best-selling celebrity fragrance in the entire world for many years. It sold $61.3 million in 2010 alone. The auction sale for her jewelry collection also broke records when it sold for $157 million in 2012. What's Liz Taylor's memory do you find most extraordinary? Let us know in the comments section below.